Hey, what is going on guys? In this video series, I'm going to teach you how to build a computer. And the computer I'm going to be building is actually a PC gaming machine, which is at a, well, total value of $2,800 worth of parts. Yeah, that's a bit better now, isn't it? So, if you're planning to build a computer that's maybe $500, $1,000, $2,800 like myself, or maybe even four dollars or $5,000, technically you still follow this video series and learn how to build a computer. It is because the essential components are more or less the same. So let me go over the essential components that uh, you're going to need and kind of help you decide on what kind of budget you might want to factor for, which is all a matter of personal preference. And then I'll explain why am I spending $2,800 on a computer and then you'll understand everything. Uh, and then the next video, we'll actually start building the computer itself. So this is more of the theory part of it and understanding how to plan to buy that computer, how to budget it. So why would you follow this video series if your computer is going to be about maybe $500? or $4,000. Why would you follow me, which has a value of 2,800 bucks worth of parts? Because the basic essentials are all the same. You need a case to house everything together. You're gonna need a motherboard. Uh, now the motherboard and the RAM, I actually I'm gonna buy, actually I did purchase it online, just gotta pick it up from the store right after this video recording. So it's not here right now, but it'll be in the video in which I put the motherboard processor RAM together. So you will see that. But basically, so you need the case to house everything together, the motherboard, which helps all the devices communicate with one another, uh, the RAM will help with the multitasking, uh, you're going to need some sort of storage. Now this could be a solid state drive, which is very common now and very fast, or it could be a hard drive. You're going to need one or the other. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you will need something to store your data on and your operating system. You're also going to need a processor to think and calculate all those little details for you. You're also going to need a power supply which will convert power from your outlet into your machine and power everything together. Now some other things there are available but they're actually technically optional. Now the first of course is a graphic card. That is technically optional because nowadays say Intel processors have integrated graphics. They can give you the full resolution of your 1080p monitor but you don't need a graphic card anymore because a lot of the new processors have that built in. Graphic cards are designed for people who want to do, say, uh, obviously PC gaming. Uh, if you want to do some video editing, some of them have some uh, capabilities to speed up the rendering process. Or, of course, if you're doing something like, say, AutoCAD design. Another thing that's optional, which might actually shock some newbies, is that you don't need a CD, DVD, or Blu-ray drive anymore. That is totally optional now. We're no longer in 2005, the year, or be earlier than that. This is the year 2015 and beyond, obviously, if you're watching this. Everything can be done on a USB stick nowadays. You can boot Windows off a USB stick. You don't need, technically, an optical drive like CD, DVD, or Blu-ray anymore. That's totally optional. The other thing that's quite optional, which I don't actually have right now, uh, is water cooling. If you're planning to build a specialty machine that's $1,500 or more, you might want to go into water cooling, which provides better cooling for your machine, but you might be wondering, why did I spend 2800 bucks but not get water cooling? Well, because I spent 2800 bucks. I plan to do water cooling maybe later on. Right now my goal is to just build this machine and get it up and running and teach you guys how to build a computer. So there you have it. Those are the essentials on building a computer. You don't have to have all the works. So it doesn't matter if your budget is 500, 1000, 4000 dollars. You can still follow this video series on how to build a computer. Now what kind of computer budget is good for you is totally dependent on what you're going to do. So for example, if you're planning to do, say, uh, internet day-to-day -day web browsing, you want to watch 4K videos on your computer, which does require a little bit of processing power and speed, or maybe you just want to do something like, say, use Microsoft Office a lot, just the basic essentials day-to-day. -day. You can get away with a budget about even like $400, depending on your currency. The Canadian dollar is really low right now, so you can go with 500 bucks in Canada, but four to $500 is your simple day-to-day -day tasks and you can still have a nice working computer for a few years to come. Computer processing power has become very overkill for day-to-day -day tasks now because technology is advancing so quickly. So four to 500 bucks can last you a good time. A thousand dollar budget, in my opinion, a lot of people will argue with this, but in my opinion, a thousand dollars is what you could use to build an entry level gaming PC. So this is just like something that'll get you like somewhat decent graphics, uh, maybe a little bit lower than PS4, which is out right now and Xbox One but it'll still look better than Xbox 360, for example. Again, this depends on your country's currency value, but you can get away with a thousand bucks for an entry-level gaming PC. $1,500 or a beyond. Um, I would say this is more of a specialty. You should know what you're doing. So for example, I'm spending 2,800 bucks. 
Why am I doing that? Well, the first is, of course, for PC gaming. So um, the components I picked, I did a lot of research on them. I chose a Roswell Blackhawk case, um, which from my research shows I have a lot of space for my graphic card to fit because graphic cards, the top of the line ones, are massive. So I have a lot of space in it. Then of course, I have the ability to customize and add and remove, say, more hard drives, more solid state drives, uh, add additional Blu-ray or DVD drives if I want to, or take them out with a lot of ease. So that's why I chose this case. The MSI GTX 980 is a very, very powerful graphic card. I plan to max out some of the games. I'm behind on PC gaming right now. Um, I should actually be playing Batman Arkham Origins. So I'm two years behind on PC gaming. With this baby, yeah, I should be rocking those games on max graphics, no problem. I chose a solid state drive instead of a hard drive because solid state drives are much faster. A little bit more expensive than hard drives, but they're much faster. Right now I have 256 gigs, which is very little for 4K video recording, which I plan to do later on, as well as PC gaming, but due to my budget and 2800 bucks, maybe I'll get a few more SSDs later on and raid them together, or just swap them for strictly a one terabyte SSD afterwards. We'll see. Uh, I have a 750 watt power supply, which is more than adequate enough to power everything, including most importantly, the graphic card. That's very important. My motherboard, uh, it fell. My motherboard is a Asus Z97 Pro, which has built-in Wi-Fi AC adapter. Um, it has a whole bunch of PCIe ports for graphic cards and other various devices. It's got the works in it. It's, it's a great motherboard overall. Um, and of course, the RAM is 32 gigs of RAM. Now, if you plan to do some pretty hardcore gaming, you can actually get away with 16 gigs of RAM. And even then, 16 gigs of RAM is still a little bit more than what is necessary to play some of the top graphic uh, games. So why did I go with 32 gigs of RAM? Well, for not for YouTube, but as a home hobby, say for family functions, I might have multiple 4K cameras set up, as I do with 1080p cameras currently, and I'll be recording one thing. But I might want to choose this angle instead of this one. So in order to play both of those video playbacks together at the same time while using Adobe Premiere Pro, it uses up a crazy amount of RAM and processing power. So that's why I need 32 gigs of RAM, because with 4K footage at multiple angles being played at the same time and editing at the same time, it's gonna use a lot of RAM. So that's why I went crazy with it. So don't be surprised anymore. So basically, it doesn't matter what your budget is, 500 bucks, 1,000, 2,800 like myself, or four grand, you can still follow. This is the basic essentials. This is what you need to build a computer. Now the last thing to keep in mind, of course, is extra peripherals. Will you need additional things with your computer? So for example, I'm building this new PC, but because it's a gaming PC, I got a gaming monitor. Now gaming monitors are pretty expensive, but for you, maybe you'll just need a general basic 1080p monitor, but that's still something you have to count for that's gonna be a few hundred bucks. Then of course, maybe you want a new mouse, a new keyboard, which for me, gaming keyboard and mouse are like $100 each. Then I bought a new speaker set because my current computer speaker set was about 12 years old. So these are a few hundred dollars extra worth of components that you may or may not need, but it's something you should surely account for because you'll never know if you want to end up getting it. So make sure when you budget, not just your PC, budget everything that you want. Like you're gonna imagine that you're sitting at your desk and all your components are ready well, what do you need to buy? Make a list of it and then start budgeting for it and see what kind of components for your computer will meet your requirements for your day-to-day -day tasks or what you plan to accomplish with your PC. So in the next video, I'm gonna teach you about anti-static. Uh, you're gonna need an anti-static -sta strap. You're gonna need some basic toolkits. I recommend a magnetic multi-screwdriver uh, PC kit. Magnetic screwdriver kits are very safe for a computer. A lot of people go crazy because it's magnets. The magnetic power in these toolkits is such, like, it's so tiny. Even if I would touch it with a processor, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna damage anything. So make sure you get that because if you drop a screw in one of those parts and it's hard to reach with your hand, uh, you're gonna have to shake the computer out, which is a big no no. So try to get a magnetic screwdriver kit for a computer. Uh, anti static strap is another one. And all these kind of things I'll be explaining in the next video. And from here on out, we're gonna actually start building this supercomputer. So hopefully you guys found this video useful and planning and budgeting for a computer that you may want. And I hope that you find the next set of videos very useful. There's only four of them, I believe. Uh, depends after I'm done recording. But there should only be four in which I explain how to do and build a computer in each segment and break it down for you guys very easily. I plan to make this very easy. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out the other videos. 
be sure to check out my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter link, and Instagram links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help, subscribe, and thanks for watching.